insurance coverage. Insurance companies are reluctant to cover mental the, the reasoning being mental disorders cannot be seen. It's very subjective. Uh, it's like having a, a headache. You cannot see the headache. Having pain, you cannot see the pain. So they say that you say you're depressed. We cannot see your depression. So we, we are reluctant to cover you. But you tell me you have pneumonia. Pneumonia can be seen on X-ray. Then we will cover you if you have physical illnesses, pneumonia, heart problem, gastric problem. Because you can do a gastric gastroscope and you can see the ulcers in the stomach. So you can actually show objectively you have a physical problem. Right? But when it comes to mental illness, because of the lack of objectivity, many insurance companies don't want to cover. And if they cover mental illness, the premium is very high. They feel that um, it may be abused. So there may be people overclaiming since this cannot be proven. A lot of people will check into hospital and say, I'm depressed. Then they end up, the insurance will have to keep paying. So, the very few insurance companies cover mental illness. And if you are covered, the premium is very high. And all work on the basis that mental illness is subjective, cannot be proven physically. There are no tests. You don't have blood tests or scan to show that you're depressed. And that is a big problem. So how do we solve this problem? I have always been proposing a panel. A panel of three psychiatrists who will determine whether if you keep claiming using depression as your illness, the insurance company will say, okay, we subject you to a panel. The panel will decide whether your depression is clinically proven, whether it's clinical depression or just uh, just sadness, right? So if it's proven clinical depression by this panel, then we will cover you because you are really, really clinically depressed. But if you are sad because something happened, you fail your exam, you are sad, but masquerading as depression, if you have uh, lost something big, like lost in your uh, shares, for example, or loss of a pet, you, know, you, you, you have a state of grief, masquerading a depression. Then the panel will say, you don't have clinical depression. I am afraid, you know, uh, maybe the insurance company will only pay you once, twice, but not on and on and on. So it depends on how you look at that illness and whether you are prepared to cover or not. So we, we have proposals, we can propose so that, so that Singaporeans don't have to keep hiding their mental illness. You know, and then uh, keep masquerading you know, uh, behind a label. You know, we have patients who say, oh, don't, don't write down depression. Uh, the insurance company will not pay. You just help us write down insomnia. Maybe insomnia they would pay. So it, it is, it's a very, it's an area that we need to explore further. Uh, that's one, one area of advocacy for the mentally ill, fighting for their rights to be insured. They shouldn't be uh, not given the chance to be insured just because it's a mental illness. And there are many other areas we can do to advocate for the mentally ill in Singapore. I, I wouldn't want to go into details at this juncture. Huh? Thank you. Stephen, back to you. All right, so we'll take in the last three questions for the evening, which are very <laughs> interesting questions. All right, what are the main differences among the different parties contesting for GE 2020? Main differences. Right, the main differences between the different parties contesting for GE 2020. Wow, that's a very tough question. But In your opinion. <laughs> okay, but... I am very glad, you know, I'm very glad that uh, Workers' Party concentrate on the East, PSP concentrate on the West, SDP, the Central Corridor. 
and a few parties, northeast sector and central. So the good news is that all seats are contested and only two or three corner fight. That's, that's wonderful, right? That means that there will, I, I assume, a lot of background uh, negotiation going on. Brilliant. I think it's brilliant. So it is uh, back to 2015 when all seats were contested as well. And it's very good. People talk about by-election effect. I think by-election effect has a negative spin off. You allow those constituencies uncontested. Yeah winners to go and assist those constituencies which are contested. So that is not exactly a, a situation we want to be in. So that is the only uh, big difference I can see. Eh? Political party emphasizing on different corners of Singapore. And uh, hopefully uh, enough uh, 32 seats to deny the PAP the to third majority. I see more similarities than differences. All of us want to go into parliament and all of us think that this super majority enjoyed by the PAP is not tenable. It's not sustainable. This country cannot just be ruled by one political party, dominated by one political party. It's a very unhealthy trend and we have already tolerated for so many decades. So I see more similarity than differences. And the good news, and I always say, the opposition quality, the quality of opposition candidates has improved tremendously. When I started in 2011, there was me as a full kerner and Tanji Se as permanent a principal private secretary to go chok tong, to senior civil servants, so to speak. By 2015, we added Colonel Tan Ping An, so two full colonel and a few senior servants. Look at this current state. So many talented people are in the fray. Very, very good. Every party seems to have the talented people. That's great. People as young as 22, Son Chu, uh, our PSP candidate. And talented people, young people like Darren Soon, a pilot, just reached 30 years old. So I'm very happy. The momentum of the opposition has continued. And here you have one man called Tan Cheng Bok, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok, at the age of 80, coming forward and say, haha, I want to make a difference. I want to tutor, mentor, help young politicians to enter the parliament. And I want to help them. Brilliant, because he's iconic. 26 years with the SAF. Not SAF, 26 years with the PAP. And they couldn't even engage him properly. He had to delink from the, his old party and set up a new one. So that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Here, you see, PSP, less than a year old, largest contingent in the coming GE. Brilliant. 24 candidates. Versus Workers' Party, I believe, 23 candidates. So more similarity than differences. Maybe differences in their approach to e-campaigning because we can't do much ground-to-ground -ground campaigning now and uh, no physical rallies. So the e-campaigning part could differ from party to party. But I'm glad PSP started early to have their own webinars and PSP. And uh, now it's mocked into like e-rally and, and I'm very glad. So we are very well prepared and we will, in my opinion, do well. But we will not allow complacency sink We will continue to work as if we haven't reached 
walk the ground, walk the ground, walk the ground. Win every vote. Win every vote. Thank you. Back to you. All right, uh, we are running out of time, so we try to wrap up the session soon. So the last two questions. There are some online buzz about a possible non-PAP coalition, which may remove the PAP mandate. What's your opinion of this? The, a, a coalition can only exist if you have uh, more than 32 seats. That means PAP has less than 50% of the seats, right? Then you have the smaller party forming more than 50, winning more than 50% of the seats. Then they have to team up to form a coalition. So that teaming up may include the PAP. That's, that's, that's what they're, they're thinking of. I don't personally believe that will happen because Singaporeans have been indoctrinated over the years. Without the PAP, the all will fail. So I think that will take another decade or more to, to go away. So the biggest victory opposition can achieve is, will be two third, will be 32, one third of parliamentary seats. To have this issue of coalition, you must win more than 51% of the seats, forcing the PAP into a less than 50%. Then all the parties will have to come together and say, let's form a government. That may include the PAP in the coalition government. For that scenario to happen, PAP winning less than 50% of the seats, I think is almost impossible or unthinkable. But you never know. And that's what they're trying to, to tell you. <laughs> that's what they're trying to tell you. You wake up in the morning, you see a non-PAP government. But that's coming from a point of threat of instilling fear in you. And I think it's very unhealthy and very irresponsible. The PAP can leave the stage. <laughs> the country will continue. The civil service, the police, the military will ensure that it will continue. Not to worry. Singaporean mustn't worry. PAP is only a political party. PAP is not Singapore. Don't worry. But don't worry. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Getting two Getting one third already is difficult. 32 seats, let alone more than 50% of the seats. Okay, back to you, Stephen. All right, the final question for tonight is, um, does your attempt at increasing opposition solely consist of just denying the total majority? Or, and I mean, are there any other concrete policy or process recommendation you have in mind to promote the change in political discourse? Very good question. PSB is in politics on the basis that one day we will form the government. So we start 24 candidates. We want to make inroads into parliament. And once we are in parliament, we establish ourselves as a credible opposition. The next stage is we have the ability to form the government. Maybe when we have X number of uh, opposition, MPs from maybe out of 24, let's say 18 or 10 or 15, whatever the number, well, we can have a shadow cabinet. And once we have a shadow cabinet, we can poise ourselves to work along forming the next government. So not, not impossible, not impossible. We aim high, right? We aim for the sky. If we fall, we fall on the tree. If we aim at the tree, we fall on the ground. Yes, it's ideal. It's ideal that we must poise ourselves to form the government with other parties. But the next ideal is denying them the two-third majority. Yes, back to you, Stephen. Right, uh, the last, I mean, it's not a question. It's like, how do we contact you to feedback issues if you are elected? Okay, very good. 
angyongguan.com angyongguan.com just type angyongguan.com press enter six platform will appear facebook youtube twitter linkedin my blog and as and one more okay <coughs> six platform and then uh, instagram yeah instagram so you have six platform and then below that you see how to telegram Dr. Ang. There's a number provided. Okay. And then uh, you can email me, marymau at org.sg. And then uh, you just click. You click only, you, the email will appear. Marymau, and then you, from your address, then you just write your problem. <laughs> we are receiving quite a number of feedback from the resident based on this approach. Huh? They email us to Mary Mao and then we get a, a chance to look at their feedback. Some of the feedback very useful and we make use of the feedback. We will change, learn, grow as a result of the feedback. So that's how they can reach us. But when I do my door to door, I always, uh, some of them will take Wi-Fi with me. I take with them. Then I say, I would like to send to you. So I, I'll get their telephone number. I send. And then when I send to them, they would know the, the number uh, from the telephone which I used to send. Yeah. Okay. So we will try our best to reach out as much as possible. Ah, during my door-to-door, -door, there's some situation where the discussion can take very long and I'm doing door-to-door. -door. So we will get their contact number. We'll say we'll get back to you uh, when at the later part of the day. So no problem. You can always reach me anytime you want. Yes, back to you, Stephen. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very good session this evening. I would like to thank Dr. Ang for his valuable feedback and reply. Dr. Ang has done very well in answering some of the very tough questions, uh, very good answers, and sure you have very good stamina in taking on these questions. All right, you may subscribe to Dr. Ang's social media platform to hear the latest news from him at www.angyongguan.com. And let's look forward to a great weekend ahead. See you soon in uh, the coming week's webinar. Details will be released in the uh, PSP website, uh, you, I mean, Facebook as well as Dr. Ang Yongguan's Facebook. Look It'll be on 7th of July. It'll be on 7th of July, right? 7th of July. Yeah, 7th of yeah. July. You can yeah. uh, look forward to the details, the login uh, on Dr. An's Facebook. Um, a lot of short video clips will be released as well prior to the webinar. So, okay, have a nice weekend ahead. All right, everybody. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.